Hi folks, 6 l 6 here. A lot of people have been wondering what happens when you adjust P3 on a uh, Burning Amp th BA3 front end um, or a, uh, an F5. Both of them have the P3 that Nelson put in there. What it does is it changes the source degeneration on the input JFETs and it allows you to uh, adjust your distortion by nulling out the second harmonic. Right now I've got a BA3 and the BA3 has got the P3 set to its midway point. Uh, I didn't even measure it. I just, uh, it's a 25 turn pot. I turned it all the way in one direction until it clicked, and then I turned it back 12 and a half, uh, 12 and a half turns, and so there it is in the middle. What you're looking at on the screen is uh, the top is the fundamental signal coming out of my signal generator. It's a one kilohertz sine wave, uh, and it's uh, of sufficient amplitude to put the BA3 amplifier uh, at a one watt into a four ohm resistor. Uh, Nelson always says adjust P3 at the one watt level, so here we have it. Uh, the top one's not going to change during this discussion. What it's useful for is comparing where the peaks and valleys are of the sine wave versus the peaks and valleys of the bottom. The bottom is the, the bottom trace is the, uh, is the distortion residual out of the distortion analyzer. Um, this uh, shows what the signal looks like after it's been through a very, very steep notch filter at the uh, same frequency as the fundamental and shows you the distortion. Um, you don't have the distortion meter in front of you, that's uh, a separate meter, but what you do have is the shape of the distortion residual, the bottom trace, and you also have the uh, total distortion can be visualized by uh, the, the height difference between the tops and bottoms of the peaks and the valleys. So anyway, we've got it at the midway point, and the midway point is giving us a distortion of just a teeny bit more than 0.07%. I'm going to adjust P3 uh, in, the dis in the way of just lowering the overall distortion and uh, watch the bottom trace as we do this and you can see that the overall size and smoothness and change is going to uh, is going to get a little bit smaller here. Right now we're at 0 0.06, not a whole bunch of change. I'll get it down to about 0 0.05 and all of a sudden compared to what it was in the beginning you can see on this part of the trace here that it's starting to flatten out. We're not looking like a uh, like a complete sine wave anymore. Uh, in the perfect world uh, this entire trace would be flat. You'd have uh, no difference between the fundamental and the uh, and the distortion output, and this would actually show zero as uh, and a zero would be would be flat. But there's obviously some distortion. I'm going to continue turning it down here. Uh, we're at 0.04 percent now. That's starting to flatten out. That's getting kind of interesting. And the total height is changing. It's getting smaller, so we're getting uh, less distortion. There's 0.03 percent, and all of a sudden we've kind of grown a second hump right there. And watch this as we get to the minimum distortion point, which is going to be, because I'm looking at the meter, um, right about there. Okay, right now, this has uh, got the second distortion all nulled out. And lo and behold, we have more peaks and valleys for every one that we have here, uh, down here. So this is now third, uh, third distortion, third harmonic, excuse me, uh, dominant, which is kind of interesting. Now, I can continue turning the pot in the same direction. The overall distortion is going to go up, but uh, and you're also going to watch everything look a lot weirder. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. Um, and in just, uh, the, the, we're back to the original starting distortion since we've kind of gone past the low part and gone back the other way. Um, you know, kind of hit, hit, hit the bottom and bounced back. And it's starting to look more secondy, but it's also, uh, you know, in, in, a, in an odd spot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to the lowest point which is right about there, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the middle point. Um, my screwdriver slipped off, there we go. Put it back to the middle point and keep turning it back up to where we started, which was about 0.07%, uh, 0.05, 0.04, and that was about where we started, right about there. Now. What's it sound like? Well, I think that the middle point, if you've got reasonably well-matched JFET, sounds really quite good. Um, and of course, you can go ahead and, and, and adjust it in any direction that you want. I have found, in my opinion, that if you were to go ahead and turn it all the way down for a minimum distortion, where the second harmonic is completely nulled out, and you have uh, extremely dominant third harmonic and almost no second, you get a very, so the distortion looks like that, you get a very clean very fast, very articulate, very dynamic sound. 
that is um, really quite interesting to listen to. It also has absolutely no soul. Uh, it has no has very little warmth, and um, in in the long term, I don't particularly care for it. That is, of course, my opinion. I like to have it somewhere when this lump here starts to get pretty smooth. That's all around there. That's just a little bit less than the halfway point. Um, now, of course, you don't know which which way you're turning it, which direction you're turning it, depending on uh, what you're doing, but without without this. But you can, through listening tests uh, and marking how many turns you've gone in one direction or another, figure it out. So that's where we started, back at the halfway point, and that's actually a very nice-looking distortion residual. I'm going to crank it down just a little bit, just a teeny, teeny bit. There we go. There's 0 0.06 at 1 watt, uh, 1K. I like that. Well, anybody who is curious as to what it does, there's kind of some information. I hope that helps. This is 6L6 signing off.